sister. <laughs> All you. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, every day we think, well, is anybody going to be at the press conference? And uh, I really meant to be here at 1 o'clock, but we sort of I got home and uh, went to a baby blessing down in Moapa today. And we got home, and uh, I don't know, there just seemed to be a few security problems. And when I needed to come, I couldn't come. And, uh, but uh, really nothing serious that I know of. <clears throat> uh, you know, I look for direction every morning. And uh, the last couple of mornings, the only direction I could seem to gather is we got a job that's not done. Uh, you know, and of course, what sort of the mandate was is for the, the county sheriffs of each county to disarm the bureaucracies within that army. In other words, take away the guns. And as I thought about it this morning, it just seemed to be a little more serious. Either we're going to take away those guns uh, in that manner, where we're doing it county by county, or we're going to have to fight a civil war. And I don't know, I hate to say that, but that's, that's really what I could see happening. That's where, that's where we're headed. And now I think the good Lord's give us a, a way to solve this problem uh, if we want to listen to him. If we don't want to listen to him, then I guess we'll progress on down the road until this country will be taken over like this county was here a week ago. Uh, <coughs> a week ago, I, I guess I'm right on time, a week, it seemed like it been a year ago, but a week ago today, and about this time was about the time that uh, we said, go get the job done, get her done. And you know, we had horses up on this hill, and they just, how many was here to witness that? Okay, you know, you guys can tell the story better than I can, but you know, there's horses up on the hill, 50, 60 of them, and they were, I don't know, several hundred of, of people here around, and when we said, go get the job done, they took off and went out and hogged the freeway off and went and up where those cattle were, and they faced this army. It was an army of of the people against the people. That you know that really sounds terrible. You, we an army of the people against the people, and we've had this army against us for years in, in the sense of a bureaucracy, uh, bureaucrat depressing us and causing us trouble where we're not able to produce or we're not able to educate, or we're not even able to feed ourselves without a bureaucracy. And uh, and we're, we've got the combination where we're not producing. We're not, our industries are all over in China and places like that because of regulations. You know, the EPA and all of these different things. That's why these industries move. And then the livestock industry, uh, they're, they're, elim they're eliminating this. I know in Nevada since 1980, which most of us think that's not very far back. There's only half the amount of cattle in Nevada as it, as it were in 1980. And if you go back to 1964, that's the year I graduated, that's 50 years, uh, Elko County was the cattle capital of the world. There's more cattle in that area in that square miles than anywhere in the world. And look at it, we are not, how we are now. We're not producing enough beef. We're wondering whether we got enough other agriculture products and the rest of the world. <coughs> For example, China. That's what we've seen come forth the last 10, 15 years. China is now wealthy enough to buy beef and eat beef. And so now they compete with America. You know, 15 years ago they were eating uh, fish and uh, rice. Today they're eating America beef, but it's not only America is not producing the beef. Australia and Argentina, those countries that used to import a metric, millions of metric ton of beef to America, they've got a better market. So in other words, we have a bigger responsibility as producers to feed not only the world, but to feed we the people. And we can't do it under this, uh, this these bureaucracies. Uh, they're just, they're eating us up. They're not only eating our money up, and eating our, the fat of the land, 
they're depressing the producer to where he can't produce. And that's very sad. And what do we need? We need freedom. We need freedom to be able to exercise our conscience. We need freedom to be able to experiment and to uh, uh, move around and, and uh, use our resources. America is still the greatest land on earth with more resources. You know, you're starting to hear rumors that we have enough oil now. For years we thought we were going to run out of oil. Now we got enough oil. I know we have a lot of coal. We have uranium. We have a lot of resources. We got we got a lot of water. We, there are no reasons we should be in a depression. We're every one of us is sort of anxious to get out and work. Our young people don't even know how to work because they haven't had the opportunity. There's nobody needing to be on welfare in this land. We've got a job for everybody. And what about all of those babies that are not coming to this earth? How come we, the people, allow that to happen? There's a plenty of room and plenty of space for those, those little spirits to come here and receive their bodies and mingle with us and let us love them. Let them have part of this American experience. <coughs> Instead of that, we cut their life off and don't even let them, let them be born. <coughs> Things like that, we've got to take care of that. I think the, the start really is, let's, let's, let's take the arms away from these people. <coughs> I need some water. <coughs> I think that our responsibility is is so sacred, sacred and so patriotic. I think it's the same same responsibilities our forefathers, our founding fathers had. <coughs> they said that, and I don't know who quoted this, but he said that when they come out of the committees and uh, they evidently made a vote and decide what they're going to do, which one said? They ask the media, people ask him, what have we got? And he says, you've got a republic form of government if you can it's keep it. Keep. Ben Franklin. Okay, Ben said that. Okay, and, and here we are down the road a couple hundred years, and it's still, we have a republic form of government if we can keep it. If we don't keep that republican form of government, what have we got? Dictatorship. Dictatorship, communism, and... Uh, and there's a, I don't see him here today, but let me tell you a little story. You guys that was on the front line of the bridge seen that this happened. There was a, a man there, and uh, I've known him for several years. He's been around here, actually worked from a neighbor, and he had a flag. I don't know what flag he had, but he wanted to charge the enemy, sh charge those BLM guns, and he wanted to climb over the fence, and, and he was willing to take the first bullet. And you know what he said? He says, I've lived in a communist country, and I'll be damned if I'm going to live that way again. <laughs> and he was ready to take the first bullet for we the people. He, he's been raised in Russia and worked for Russian government. Anyway, uh, we got the work to do, and and what a what an opportunity. What a what a party we had last night, and this like Gavin, what a freedom we've got today. There's one thing that was on my mind though, and through this whole thing, and especially last night. Uh, <clears throat> you look around, and we're all basically just white people. Where is our colored brother? Where is our Mexican brother? Where is our Chinese, where, where are they? They're, they're just as much American as we are, and we, we're not, they're not with us. If they're not with us, they're going to be against us. I, I want to, uh, I've, I've been raised here in this little community, and I've hardly ever seen a, a black man until I was almost a teenager. <laughs> 
But let me tell you experience. I lived in California during the Watts riot. And I worked, got a, a heavy piece of equipment, and I was working on the east side of uh, Los Angeles, building a Fort Garage when the riot started. And I worked with a black man, was, he was a owner truck driver. Uh, he owned his own truck, and I worked on that job the day this thing came. And that man was sick and humble. He said he sort of knew what was going to happen. And I, of course, the rest of us didn't understand. And then pretty soon, they was, uh, the cops come by and stopped. Uh, as I made my pass to dump the dirt out there in the parking lot, a cop come by and he stopped me and he said, have you ever seen anybody uh, in that uh, uh, phone booth who was on a construction job? <coughs> I said, no, I haven't. He said, there's just a murder reported in that phone booth. And a, around, the, around the valley, of Los Angeles Valley, there's a fire here and a fire here and a fire here. And now there was a, a murder reported in that phone booth. <coughs> Before the day was over, I couldn't leave the job site except just enough to get it to a hotel. And I got up in about the 14th, 15th story to this hotel and watched the TV. And when I watched that TV, I looked out the window and I could see the very same sight. The TV camera was in that building taking pictures, and I was looking out the window. And guess what I see? About a block south, of two blocks south of Harbor Freeway, they were setting the world on fire. And who was setting it on fire? It wasn't we the people. It was the Negro group. People herself was setting their own city on fire and raping their own city and, and stealing from their own city. And then I watched that for three days. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even have a car, and I finally got somebody to bring my car up around the city. And, of course, I didn't have no money by now, and I didn't have no gas. And I lived down the Harbor Freeway towards uh, Long Beach. And so we decided to go down the freeway. And we headed down the freeway. There was no cars, not even one car. The only thing that looked like the National Guard was across the top of the overpass. It was the only thing of a friendly thing I could see. And you're, you're in your equipment. Right? I'm, no, I, I couldn't bring the equipment. I'm in my car now. And I'm going down this freeway about eight lanes wide and headed towards the ocean. And then two cars come up along the side of me. And they was full of black boys. And, and I got about uh, 20 miles to go. <laughs> anyway, they pulled up along the side of me and escorted me. I just kept going. And when I got to down about Wilmington where I needed to turn off, I took an exit and turned off. So now I'm home down by the ocean, about 20 miles from where I started. And I have an apartment in the second story. And across the, there was a field about the size of that between here and the water. There's a railroad track. And on the other side of the railroad track, there's a lumber yard. So I'm sitting here listening to the radio, and, and the fire is burning 20 miles towards me from LA. And, and guess what I see? I see some guys going through that lumber yard, and pretty soon the lumber yard's on fire. And so what I'm testifying to you, uh, I was in the Watts riot. <coughs> I seen the beginning fire, and I seen that last fire. <coughs> what I seen is civil disturb disturbance. People are not happy. People are thinking they don't have their freedoms and don't have these things, and they didn't have them. We've progressed quite a bit to, from that day until now, and we sure don't want to go back. We sure don't want these colored people to have to go back to that point. We sure don't want these Mexican people to go back to that point. And we can make a difference right now by taking care of some of these bureaucracies and do it in a peaceful way. Let me tell, talk to you about the Mexicans. So these are just things I know about the, the, the Negro. I want to tell you one more thing I know about the Negro. When I, when I go, went, uh, go through Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, <coughs> and I would see these little government houses, and in front of that government house, the, the door was usually open, 
and the, the the older people and the kid, and there's always at least a half a dozen people sitting on the porch. They didn't have nothing to do. They didn't have nothing for their kids to do. They didn't have nothing for their young girls to do. And because they were basically on government subsidy, and so now what do they do? They abort their their young children. They put their young men in jail because they never they never learned how to pick cotton. And I've often wondered, oh, are they better off as slaves picking cotton, having family life, and doing things, or are they better off under government subsidy? They just transferred. They, they yeah, they didn't get no more freedom. They got less freedom. They had less uh, family uh, alive. And their happiness, you can see in their faces, they weren't happy sitting on that con con concrete sidewalk. Down there, they were probably growing their turnips. So that's all government. That's not freedom. Now let me talk about the Spanish people. You know, I understand that they come over here against our Constitution and cross our borders. <coughs> but they're here and their people. And I've worked beside beside a, a lot of them. Don't tell me they don't work, and don't tell me they don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And don't tell me they don't have better family structures than most of us white people. When you see those Mexican families, they're together, they're picnic together, they're spending their time together. And I'll tell you, in my way of thinking, they're awful nice people. And we need to have those people join us and be with us, not 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 come to our party. I one thing I've learned about our Constitution is our Constitution was formed and it set up for the individual. Remember, on top of our flags over here, we the people, and the the power is in we the people. The sovereignty is in we the people. But even more so, it's in the individual, individual soul. And our, our Heavenly Father thinks we're so important. And our, con our founding fathers felt we, we, that soul was so important that they formed the whole Constitution so we could have freedom and liberty and be able to conscience, our, our own individual conscience, to do the things I talked about, to be able to create and move about, have free re religion and enjoy life here on earth. I, this is what I have to say to you. Thank you very much.